In part one of this presentation, we describe resistance as friction that electricity experiences as it flows through something. Resistance is useful because it allows us to control current in a circuit. As we discussed, a circuit like this, with little or no resistance, is out of control. The current flow will be as great as the power supply or battery can produce. Likely this excess current will damage the circuit and quickly deplete the battery. This is called a short circuit. Resistance, such as provided by the light bulb in this circuit, controls the current to a safe level. It also does something useful by providing light. The light bulb is the part of the circuit called a load. This schematic diagram shows the same circuit used in a flashlight. It has a battery, conductors, and a light bulb. Here it is shown as a pictorial diagram. This is one of the simplest functional circuits. It consists of a power supply such as a battery, conductors such as wires, and a load resistance such as the light bulb. What is lacking in this circuit? There is no way to conveniently turn the light on and off. In the first part of this presentation, we discussed that if a circuit is broken at any place, the current will stop flowing. This is called an open circuit. A break in a circuit can be thought of as a very large resistance, or even an infinite resistance. What we see here is the basis for switching lamps on and off by remote switches. Because any break in a circuit's continuity results in current stopping throughout the entire circuit, we can use a device designed to intentionally break that continuity, called a switch, mounted at any convenient location that we can run wires to in order to control the flow of the electrons in the circuit. This is how a switch mounted on a wall of a house can control a lamp that is mounted down a long hallway, or even in another room, far away from the switch. The switch itself is constructed of a pair of conductive contacts, usually made of some kind of metal, forced together by a mechanical lever, actuator, or push button. When the contacts touch each other, electrons are able to flow from one to the other and the circuit's continuity is established. When the contacts are separated, electron flow from one to the other is prevented by the insulation of the air between, and the circuit's continuity is broken. Perhaps the best kind of switch to show for illustration of the basic principles of a switch is the knife switch. A knife switch is nothing more than a conductive lever, free to pivot on a hinge, coming into physical contact with one or more stationary point, contact points which are also conductive. The switch seen here is constructed on a porcelain base, an excellent insulating material, using copper, an excellent conductor, for the blade and contact points. The handle is plastic to insulate the operator's hand from the conductive blade of the switch when opening or closing it. Here is another type of knife switch with two stationary contacts instead of one. It has one blade but two stationary contacts, meaning that it can make or break more than one circuit. For now, it is not terribly important to be aware of this type of switch, just the basic concept of what a switch is and how it works. Knife switches are great for illustrating the basic principle of how a switch works, but they present distinct safety problems when used in high-power electric circuits. The exposed conductors in a knife switch make accidental contact with the circuit a distinct possibility, and any sparking that may occur between the moving blade and the stationary contact is free to ignite any nearby flammable materials. Most modern switch designs have their moving conductors and contact points sealed inside an insulating case in order to mitigate these hazards. A photograph of a few modern switch types shown shows how the mechanisms are much more concealed than in the knife design. In keeping with the open and closed terminology of circuits, a switch that is making contact with one connection terminal to the other, for example a knife switch with the blade fully touching the stationary contact point, provides continuity for electrons to flow and is called a closed switch. Conversely, a switch that is breaking continuity, for example a knife switch with the blade not touching the contact, stationary contact point, won't allow electrons to pass through and is called an open switch. This terminology is often confusing to the new student of electronics, because the words open and closed are commonly understood in the context of a door, where open is equated with free passage and closed with blockage. 
With electrical switches, these terms have opposite meaning. Open means no flow, while closed means free passage of electrons. Thanks for watching.